Hello, Travis with Heggy. Today we're going to talk about the Raven Smart Track system as run through Raven's Viper 4 field computer. Um, as you can see, I've got the main page for the Viper 4 pulled up here. Um, first off, we're going to hit the gears down in the bottom left next to the picture of the machine. This will bring me into my settings menu. I will then slide over until I find my Smart Tracks icon. Smart Tracks is Raven's automatic steering system, it's their auto steer. I will select that Smart Tracks button. It's going to bring me into the Smart Tracks information. First page I have here, or first tab I have is System Information. It has my machine type, um, in this case a Hagi STS 10 or 12 machine, um, as well as the control device, in this case Steer Ready. All Hagi STS machines model year 2012 and newer were built Steer Ready. Um, sensor type I have is WAS or wheel angle sensor. Um, all of those steer ready Hagi machine, all STS's 2012 model year and newer, will have a wheel angle sensor. Also gives me my wheelbase, in this case 140 inches, my antenna height and my antenna position for aft on the machine. Also my last two options down here at the bottom, I have options to recalibrate the hydraulic system and or reset the smart track system. Note, if I reset the smart track system, I will have to go through that calibration process again. Um, not only the hydraulic calibration, but also terrain compensation um, and other things like that. Second tab we have here is our diagnostics tab. Uh, very, very useful. Top section here, I have manual drivers, so I can manually tell this steering system to articulate my wheels either left or right at the minimum or the maximum setting. Um, just by pressing and holding on those, those will make those wheels move. I'm a good check to see if I have my valve hooked in right. Everything's functioning properly there. Down below that, I have all of my valve driving values, all of my PWM values, as far as left min, left max, right min, right max, as well as gains. Um, the mins and the maxes can be adjusted. Um, normally, after performing an auto calibration, these values are automatically adjusted during that process. Um, Normally, we don't come in here and adjust those very much. Um, there are certain instances where these values need to be adjusted. Um, just do take caution when adjusting them. They can affect performance greatly. Also notice down here in the bottom section on the right-hand side, I have a blue bar with, a, with an arrow pointing to the right. If I select that, it actually slides that page over. It gives me a couple more options. First one we have here is disengage sensitivity. Um, one thing to note here is all steer ready Hagi machines, um, steering sensitivity or disengage sensitivity adjustments should be made on the machine side, um, not in the steering controller for the most part. Um, we go through and on our machine side send a signal to the steering controller. It's not actually looking for a raw value. Um, it's not reading pressure transducer. We're actually sending a, a signal to the steering controller. So those those adjustments should be made on the the machine side. Also gives me my current um, in milliamps as far as a couple different things we can look at. And then up in the right hand section here we can kind of see there's a picture of a steering wheel as well as a foot switch. Um, these will change from red to green or green to red depending when I either turn my steering wheel, activate that disengage switch um, manually overriding with my steering wheel or hitting the foot switch for engage or the end row management button for remote engage. I will also see that foot switch icon change color. Third tab at the top, I have sensor status. Um, these are my yaw and my steering position sensor or wheel angle sensor. Um, as you can see the top, I've got a couple of values here that are jumping around a little bit. As we sit here, um, it's normal for those values to, to jump around a little bit as we're sitting still here. Steering position sensor, I have my left, center, and right. Um, these are very typical values. I will have a left value right around that 50 mark, a center mark value right around 500, and a right value pretty close to 950. Um, there is zero to a thousand counts as we move that cylinder from lock to lock. Um, within the sensor, that cylinder does not move quite as far as that sensor goes. So those are typical values. Those are the values that I'm looking to see. Um, right below that, I have current wheel angle. Um, gives me a, a angle readout and then a current sensor reading. Now, I don't have a sensor hooked into the system, so it's reading zero right now. 
But if I was troubleshooting my wheel angle sensor for whatever reason, um, this is my current reading. So as I turn my wheels from all the way left to all the way right, I should see that value slowly and gradually increase. Um, I shouldn't see any big jumps or skips or stops. Um, something like that would indicate an issue with that steering position sensor that uh, should, be, should be looked at a little further. Next tab at the top here I have is 3D compensation. Um, all of the 3D compensation for, the, uh, for GPS position is done within the SmartTrack system. So this is what's figuring out if I'm, I'm on a side hill, um, I need to offset my GPS over. Um, it automatically knows that with this 3D compensation. Again, all of my raw values sitting here, um, as well as current direction, also where our system's getting reverse sense, trying to figure out whether we're going forward or backwards at any given point in time. Next tab gives us our SmartTrack's GPS setting. Um, these values generally don't change. Um, we're, we're normally not doing anything with these values. And then the last tab here is our air log. So any errors that come up in the steering system, whether uh, it's telling us it's ready here or if it's saying too slow, um, too fast, or I'm, it's having some other trouble engaging the steering system, you'll see an air log pop up here. Thanks for watching today's video. If you have any other suggestions or ideas of videos or questions that we can answer, please leave a comment 